Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to paint some amazing watercolor art using none other than your Cricut. Yes, you can totally do this. And I'm gonna show you how from start to beautiful finish. So please pull up a chair here at my craft table and I'll show you exactly how to do this. Painting and cricketing aren't typically thought of as being related to one another, but what if I told you that this odd combination could create beautiful pieces of art like these? Have you ever wanted to create gorgeous watercolor paintings, but you just aren't sure where to start? Well, in this video, I'm going to get you feeling really confident about your budding painting skills. I'll show you how anyone can paint beautiful plant pictures just like these, but with your own unique artistic twist. I'll show you how to draw these cool plant designs using your Cricut and just a few materials like Cricut watercolor markers, cards, and watercolor paper. You can insert these watercolor markers right into your Cricut cutting machine, tell it to draw a design, and then use a paintbrush and water to bring the picture to life. Getting the files prepared in Cricut Design Space does require a few very important steps, but don't worry. I'll show you everything you need to know to make these beautiful little paintings on cards or watercolor paper. But first, let me show you how to get these free designs. Step one, get my free watercolor plant painting designs. First, download my watercolor plant designs at jennifermaker.com slash 557. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top and then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 557 and click the link to download the designs. Now unzip the file. If you're not sure how to do this, visit jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how. In the folder, you'll find an SVG folder with four different designs for you to choose from. There is a grow warm-up design, a succulent, a potted cactus, and a sunflower. I'm going to use the Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine in this video, but you can also use an original Cricut Maker, any Cricut Explore series machine, the Cricut Venture, and the Cricut Joy, and the Cricut Joy Extra. One thing to note though is that the Cricut Joy and the Joy Extra use a different size of watercolor marker. So make sure you get the right ones for your machine. The larger watercolor markers will not fit in a Joy, nor will the smaller ones fit in the bigger machines like the Explore, Maker, or Venture. I suggest starting with the warm up design, upload the file you want to your software, and add it to your canvas. If you're not sure how to upload, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to upload files. Step two, prepare and draw your practice design. First, let's prepare a simple watercolor drawing for practice like my grow design. With the design selected, click the operation menu and select pen. You will see the whole outline turn to black. And then click ungroup. In the Layers panel, click on the first group so only it is selected. Underneath, it should say Purple. On the color box next to the Operation menu, select M Marker 1 Millimeter, and then scroll down and select Purple Watercolor. Now in the Layers panel, select and delete the layer that shows the word Purple. Repeat these steps for the rest of the groups in the Layers panel, changing the pen to M Marker 1 millimeter, and making sure to select the appropriate watercolor that matches each layer's description. When you're finished, your design should be just the word grow without color names. Now select all the layers and click Attach. Now we're ready to draw our design with our Cricuts. Make sure the correct machine is selected and then click Make It. Leave mirror turned off. This design is horizontal, so you'll want to get one of the Cricut R40 size cards. Those are four and three quarter inches by 6.6 .6 inches, and then open it up. Hold it face up with the crease running horizontally and the front panel at the bottom over a green standard grip machine mat like this. 
Match the crease to a horizontal line on the mat and line up the left edge with a vertical mat guide. For this size card, I'll place the crease at the five inch mark and the left edge at one inch. That means the front panel is between the one inch and the seven and a half inch horizontally and five to 9.75 inches vertically. We'll need to remember that, make a note of it or something like that. Now adhere the card to the mat with a brayer. Back in Cricut Design Space, roughly center the design below the horizontal five inch line, but above the nine and three quarter inch line. So it won't draw on the crease, but it will all be on the card. You'll wanna use your card on your mat as a reference. You can also use a Cricut card mat to hold your cards when you're drawing on them with a Cricut. For more information on using a Cricut card mat, check out my easy Cricut insert cards tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash 391. Click continue, and then on the make screen, click browse all materials and search for watercolor. Select heavy watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Load the first watercolor marker into the correct clamp following the prompt on the screen. Now load your machine mat, making sure the card orientation and placement matches the screen, and then press the flashing button to begin drawing. When it's time to change your marker to a different color, the Cricut will pause and prompt you to swap them. And then when your Cricut has finished drawing your watercolor design, press the flashing button to unload the mat. Flip the mat over and gently roll it back to release the card without curling or bending it. Step three, paint your practice design. First, prepare your paintbrush by unscrewing the tip from the water chamber. Fill the chamber with water, leaving about a thumb's width unfilled, and then screw the brush tip back on. Then hold the brush over a paper towel and gently squeeze the water chamber until water starts coming through to the bristles. Now begin painting by dragging the damp brush along the inside edge of the letter G. You can use your brush to pull the purple and blue colors away from the edges into the center of the letter. Continue brushing along the inside lines of the G. If your brush seems dry, gently squeeze it to draw more water into the tip. If it seems like it has too much water in the bristles, blot the brush on your paper towel to soak up some excess. After you've finished painting the first letter, clean your brush by squeezing and blotting it on the paper towel until no more color comes off the bristles. Continue painting the other letters using the same method. Remember to squeeze and blot the color off of your brush between painting each letter. Now painting is an art, so feel free to experiment with different amounts of water on your brush. Remember, you are the artist here. If you have any too dark areas that you'd like to lighten, you can apply a clean, dry cotton swab to the area to absorb some of the colored water off of the paper. When you're satisfied with the way your painting looks, leave it to dry for about 30 minutes. And now your hand-painted card is ready to fill with love and send to someone special. Step four, paint the other designs. Follow the same steps as the test to prepare each design in Cricut Design Space and then draw it using watercolor markers and your Cricut. Just make sure to arrange the design on the mat where it should draw on your card or your paper. Now, are you ready to start painting your first plant? Let's get started. The succulent. Here's what my drawn succulent design looks like. With a damp brush, choose a large leaf and brush the yellow lines toward each other until the color fills a solid area. Then clean the brush like you did before. While the yellow paint is still wet, brush the red and orange lines together toward the center of the leaf. Let the orange mix slightly with the edges of the yellow area, while the red stays darker on the outer edges of the orange. Take a moment and clean your brush. Now use your damp brush to paint over the green area on the same leaf. The green will form a solid area of color, but should also mix with the yellow a bit and then clean your brush. 
let the leaf dry while moving on to the next. Choose one on the other side so the colors of the two leaves don't accidentally run together while they're both wet. Continue to follow these techniques on each leaf of the succulent until it is completely filled in. Leave the leaves to fully dry for about 30 minutes before moving on to the darker center. With a slightly damp brush, lightly dab water onto the green lines in the very center of the succulent. Then pull the green color toward the blue lines. Use your brush to mix the colors so there is a range of green, blue-green, and blue areas. And then clean the brush. Lightly paint the blue lines on the rest of the succulent. Use your brush to mix some of the red areas with the blue to form shadows beneath each leaf. This will give your succulent dark purple or red purple shadows. You can also soak up a little bit of color with a cotton swab and swipe it lightly over already dry lighter areas of color to add shading. Let the painting dry for at least 30 minutes and then it's ready to display. The Cactus here is my cute cactus design. Using a damp brush, paint over the yellow lines in the cactus to form areas of solid yellow where the lines were drawn. And then without cleaning the brush and without touching the blue lines, carefully paint the green lines on the outside of the yellow areas. Allow the green areas to touch the edges of the yellow to form a blend from green to yellow in those places and then clean your brush. Let the green and yellow areas in the cactus dry a little, but not fully, for around 10 minutes. With a slightly damp brush, touch each of the blue lines on the cactus to form solid edges of blue down the sides. Allow the blue to mix with the edges of the green to form a blend of blue to green. Using the lines at the bottom right of the cactus, form small areas of solid blue to create a darker shaded area on the bottom edge. And then clean your brush. Now fill in the yellow areas of each of the small succulent petals on the left of the cactus. Then paint over the green lines to form solid green areas. Let the green bleed into the yellow areas, creating a blend of green to yellow. Lightly touch the blue lines to form dark shadows between each petal of the succulent. Clean your brush and let the painting dry for about 10 minutes. Now with a damp brush, paint the yellow areas of the flowers on top of the cactus. And then without cleaning your brush, paint over the red lines and let them mix with the yellow. Clean your brush and then paint over the red lines in the dirt area of the pot. Then pull the wet red paint over onto the orange lines in the dirt area, allowing them to mix. Now add water to the short blue lines at the base of the succulent, then softly blend with the areas of red and orange. Continue to dip your paintbrush into the fresh blue area and add it to areas of dirt that need to be darker. Clean your brush and then paint around the edges of the pot where the blue lines are. Don't worry if the edge mixes with the other paint. Clean your brush again and then paint the yellow lines on the pot into the orange lines. And then blend them into the red lines on the left side. It's okay if the drawing lines are visible here. They give texture to the pot. Clean your brush and then lightly paint over the blue lines around the left and base. And then around the upper edges of the pot, allow the blue paint to mix with the red to form purple shadows. Let the painting dry for 30 to 60 minutes, and then your cactus is ready to display. The sunflower. And last but not least, here is our sunflower. Choose a petal to start with, and use a wet brush to paint the yellow lines. Then paint the orange lines in the same petal. Let them mix into the edges of the yellow areas to create folds in the petals. Now paint the red edge lines of the petal into the orange areas to form darker areas around the edges. Do your best to not yet touch the blue lines. Clean your brush, and while that petal dries, paint the opposite petal so the colors don't run together. And then continue on, painting each petal of the sunflower until they're all filled in. 
allow the petals to fully dry for about 30 minutes. Now begin painting the green lines in the very center. Then dampen the orange and red lines next to them and allow the colors to mix and blend. Using a damp brush, add a little bit of water to the blue circle around the center. Slowly pull the blue paint in toward the dark center to create shading where the petals and center of the flower meet. Clean your brush and paint the short blue lines in and around the petals to create shadows. Gently pull small amounts of blue paint out from the center to shade the base areas of the petals. See how the colors mix to form different colored shadows? Let your painting dry for 30 to 60 minutes and voila, your sunflower is ready to display. Step five, show it off. Didn't these turn out amazing? Frame individual watercolors as eye-catching home decor or give beautiful hand-painting cards to your family and friends. For more beautiful watercolor designs, you can draw with your Cricut and paint like an artist. See my DIY watercolor card project at jennifermaker.com slash 457. I think these turned out so amazing, don't you? Using your Cricut to draw the design for you takes so much guesswork out of creating a beautiful watercolor painting. And these are fun for all ages too. Now, if yours look different than mine, don't worry. No two watercolor paintings will really ever be alike, and that's part of the fun. Plus, sending little paintings to your family and friends in the place of regular store-bought cards is pretty awesome, I think. Want to mix things up? Give someone a painting or card that hasn't been watercolored yet. So it's just been you know, drawn like this, but not all filled in. And then give them the water brush along with a sweet little note and they'll have fun painting their own. How fun would that be? Now I did try this other brand of markers, which are the Real Like brand. They were a little easier to control, but the colors dried much softer and faster compared to the Cricut brand. It did end up actually being a little difficult to blend the colors, on the, these markers because of how fast they dried. However, the Cricut brand doesn't have as many colors to choose from, whereas the Real Light brand has 48. <laughs> My pick though are these Cricut markers because you know how I love bright colors anyways. If you find you love watercolor cards, I have more designs. I have a set of pretty bird watercolors that are very fun to make, as well as a set of autumn designs as well. And if you love watercolor designs and you wish for more, just let me know in the comments what sorts of things you're interested in. If you have any questions at all about watercoloring or working with Cricut markers, pens, cards, painting with colors, anything you think I could help you with, please let me know. Just leave your question below this video or come ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.